But but he's got that fish hook rammed so deep in his perineum he can barely stand it. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast, the only podcast keeping you from spiraling out into the infinite abyss. I'm your host, Daniel, and I'm joined, as always, by the lovely Allie Valentine. What up? What up, girl? Uh, and we also have Joseph back on the show. Woo! Woo! Hello. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Hola. Hola, senor. Um, so, yeah, we're working with a little bit uh, different setup this week. Uh, so let us know if, uh, sound quality is, um, is, has diminished so, so that we can, uh, act accordingly, but, uh, we're hoping that everything is going to work out, uh, you know, peachy. Yep. So, but, um, but yeah, anyway, um, Allie, what, uh, how was your week, man? Man, it was good. Um, <laughs> I tried to think of like. Did I have anything cool to talk about? And I really didn't. Like, it was a good week. It just wasn't, like, anything to write home about. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, I dig. Uh... Sometimes those are those are actually the best weeks. It was a really good... Like, just a low was key. good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, um, I, I've been helping with some social media stuff at work, mm. and i got to show you some of these pictures I'm going to post. I've got... They were. I was like, you guys want to do a spooky week? And they were like, oh, oh okay. So I, <laughs> I have a couple of props. I bought at uh, Target. I've got like a little posable skeleton dude that's maybe six inches tall, and yeah. I've been posing in places around the office. And it's I like love elf on the shelf him. skeleton. Yeah, it's so it's perfect. <laughs> yes. And then I've got uh, like a human hand, and it's like to scale. Yeah. Uh, but but just a bone. And um, oh man, I've been I've got like a picture of it, like holding a mug. I'm, I'm, <laughs> nice. I'm loving it. Yeah, rock and roll, <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> Uh, Joseph, how about you, man? Did you have a good week? I yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was having a my my clicker just went bananas. <laughs> um, I uh, yeah, it was a great week. Really good week. Um, quick, quick uh, thought here for you guys. Or thing that I just recently saw. Have What's you that? seen this Boston Dynamics? Like satire video. Have you guys seen this? Yes. No, I haven't. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude. It's so good. You know the Boston yeah. Dynamics? Oh, yeah, the, yeah. oh man. I, I saw somebody had posted the Reddit thing of the like gymnastics robot and they were like, Holy shit, this thing <laughs> like Dude, I can't do a jump twist like that. Like I can't even get it's close It's doing to like that. dive rolls yeah. and shit. No, that satire thing is awesome. Because I totally <laughs> thought it was pretty real. Yeah. And like halfway through I'm like, oh this escalated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to make a note. Yeah, you gotta look that up. Everybody listening, y'all have to look it up. It yeah. is a hundred percent worth. Maybe two and a half minutes long or something. It's totally worth your time. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, it's to- It's totally worth your time, and it is like, it is, it is Black Mirror, but it is like, <laughs> yes, you're watching this, and you're just like, huh, like. <laughs> This might be real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, awesome. But anyway, so yeah, great week. Um, stoked to be here with you guys. Yeah, rock yeah, and yeah. roll, rock and roll. Well, um, we uh, uh, we got to go to the UT game last night. That's probably why my voice is uh, jacked today. Um, it's not because I went on a bender. It was because I was screaming at uh, the officials for the UT South Carolina game. So it was, uh, <clears throat> to say the least, I'm I'm really proud of the boys in orange because they had to. They definitely had to beat the officials and USC last night. It was like it was pretty crazy, but uh, but we had some friends come in town from Memphis, so we were like, oh, let's go. You know, let's get a game. Let's go to, go to a game and. Uh, to see what's up or whatever, and they ended up. UT pulled it off, man. Forty-one twenty-one. It was unbelievable. It was awesome. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we ended up. We all got back uh, to the house and like got some pizza, and then basically everybody started like falling off. <laughs> it was like everybody got their their stomach full after being drunk, and uh, everybody's like, mm, yeah, I'm just gonna go to bed. So, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you know how the uh, the day long UT. Uh, Extravaganzas go, Joseph. So. Oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> quite, quite the, uh, 
quite the physical feat to even be hanging around that long, you know? <laughs> yeah, no shit, dude. No shit. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, um, so something else to mention about this episode, we're, uh, we're, it's kind of a, not, not necessarily a full-fledged special edition episode or anything, but, uh, we decided to run with the theme of, uh, Spooktober, since we're, we're in the month of October, and, uh, actually this, this, uh, podcast is gonna be released the day before Halloween, so... If you want to uh, get your jollies uh, a little bit uh, early, check us out, man. You know, listen listen to this stuff. Tell your friends and uh, enjoy. But um, so basically, what we're doing is we we've drummed up some um, some pretty much like recommendations for books and movies. Uh, we've got some stories that we wanted to tell. Maybe talk about some you know the the stuff that we. We either are or were afraid of kind of thing. And, uh, man, we'd love to have your guys' input also. And, uh, man, shoot us a tweet. Send us an email about a a scary story you had because we (laughs) eat this shit up. Yeah, send us us spooky shit. Send us horror recommendations. Send us anything creepy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so uh, without further ado, we're going to hop into the episode. Um, I did, <clears throat> we did decide to kind of, uh, start off kind of similar to previous episodes that we're going to, you know, go with a little bit lighter articles on the front end. Um, but, uh, I saw this one this morning and I just, I thought that it was, uh, th- this is not having to do with October and stuff, <laughs> but like, uh, holy hell, this was just really funny to me. Um, I pulled it from HuffPost.com. And uh, the the title was The Hoax That Tricked Millions Into Thinking About the Environment. So there were these two, uh, two kind of entrepreneurs in, um, in Georgia, the, uh, the, the country Georgia, not the state Georgia. But uh, anyway, they had this idea of coming up with an app that they would launch that um, to help combat the basically like rampant defor- deforestation that was going on in Georgia. And so they, they were like, hey, you know, download this app. Uh, pretty much just, um, yeah, and if you hear Finn in the background, it, I don't know how, I don't know if he's going to come through a little bit better in this room or not. But, uh, but anyway. So they came up with this app, and they were they were pretty much saying, okay, uh, if you will donate or whatever, you can purchase trees through this app, and then the developers of the app would plant a tree for each one that was purchased. And uh, they thought that they had something hot, and they put it on the market, and it flopped. It was like nothing, like no zero traction, zero you know anything. And they were they were just talking about it, and they were saying, man. Well, um, it was just, uh, it's, it's funny that everybody's all up in arms in, in, you know, on social media and stuff like that. But really when it comes to putting the rubber to the road, nobody's like on board kind of thing. Yeah. So they were like, all right, well there, there's some kind of, um, let's see there, they, they referenced this old George, Georgian, I guess, Georgian, Jordan. Georgian? I don't yeah, know. just Georgian. Georgian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to put too many uh, syllables yeah. in there. Yeah, you're making it too tough. Uh, yeah. Old uh, Georgian joke. There will be one day when the government will measure how much air we breathe, and they will install devices on our mouth to measure how much air we breathe and make us pay for it. So, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like a very funny joke to me. I but <laughs> But anyway, they were like, you know what? Let's invent this. <laughs> And so, uh, so they made this like satirical like development thing, and it's the dumbest looking thing that you would ever see. But they they took to social media and YouTube and uh, basically all the social media platforms and stuff, and uh, they started launching these videos. And it was just this. They they're like, oh well, what we did at and I think it's called Treepex. Yeah, yeah, Treepex. Uh, they're like at Treepex, we harness the techno- uh, the natural technology of plants that that basically, and I'm paraphrasing, but 
um, the natural technology of plants that they use in order to convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, and we have it contained in this device, this wearable device. So, <laughs> dude, they throw it on, uh, they, they like start doing, like basically promoting it and stuff. And it gets insane traction. Yeah, like everywhere covered it, it looks like. Yeah. I Wait, mean... hang on, hang on. So this device, <laughs> this device, <laughs> what was the device again? It was it's, a called, wear... it's this thing that basically clamps, clamps onto your nose and goes okay. over your mouth. Okay. And it looks it looks like a miniature like gas mask thing, you know, like really, the miniature yeah. things. Or and whatever. it's almost the size of like a toilet paper roll, like just a yeah. cardboard okay. tube in the middle. Yeah, but dude, the the um, like promo video for it is fucking incredible. <laughs> like, and I mean, these guys. What's knew, the device called again? It's called Trepex. T R E E P E X. <laughs> Wait, that's the whole company. Did they did they name the oh, device a thing? That's a good point. You know what? Um, that is the company. I mean, it may have also been Treepex. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, because it says the Treepex team published the video. So yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I'm not sure if the de- de- the device actually had a name. But... Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> Treepex, breathe your own forest. <laughs> yeah, <gasps> it was so fucking incredible, dude. But uh, basically what ended up happening is it got all this traction and people like thousands of people were contacting them being like, I want to buy this device. How do I get my hands on this device? So um, they just love kinda, wearables, man, dude. <laughs> no, so they just ran with it. Yeah. And like uh, he did some kind of an interview. I was trying to uh, find where. Um, let's see. He he basically did this interview and he like practiced like this spiel, like this elevator pitch kind of thing. And uh and dude, it 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 just went it went viral pretty much. Well, um so what what ended up happening was they they ran this shit for about I think like a month or two and they were like all right, man, we got to come clean because, like, this is this is like getting to the point of where we could potentially like get in trouble for misleading the the public kind of thing. Yeah, and if you're selling this device and saying it does this thing, well, so I don't think they actually ended up selling it. Okay, it was okay. just there was a lot of interest in buying okay. it kind of thing. Okay, and uh, dude, just the the promo videos alone, it it is absolutely incredible to me but uh but so what they ended up doing is they came clean with the with everything and they were like hey this was just kind of a goof you know we're we're totally joking we don't have this technology blah 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 and uh and people just like people actually didn't pay a hell of a lot of attention to their like whatever um them coming out about how it was just a spoof but um and now they actually use this marketing uh this marketing stuff uh, as a as an example at Georgia's business and technology univer- or university for like good marketing yeah. and like how to market and stuff. <laughs> so I just thought it was a really really funny little uh, story and just the fact that it was like so many people jumped on board and just like it was just a, <laughs> it's just so fucking silly kind of. I thing. <laughs> love when the media falls for some bullshit. Yeah. Well, dude, case in point, oh. fucking the Tetris thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Jeopardy. But yeah. but, yeah, like, or when, oh, I can't think of a good example. Dude, I, there was, there was an, yeah. another really good one this week, uh, yeah. you, you guys, and it was an Onion article yeah. that, that had, like, a Photoshop picture of like a like a minor league baseball player right uh-huh. and it was like it said uh it said uh 30 year old man um self-identifies as a six-year-old and and crushes the t-ball uh <laughs> world series oh, yes. and so it's like he's superimposed and he's just like yoking a baseball yeah. off of a t-ball and like <laughs> and then the people did all the commentary is just like I mean, this has gotten out of control. <laughs> oh no! Dude. And it just—it was just—it was just really funny because, like, the, God, the onion's so good. But it was like, yeah, it, people were just like, I mean, come on, like he's 
He, this is a, gr- a full-grown semi-pro pro, uh, pro player. What are we doing letting him play with six-year-olds? <laughs> yeah. I fucking love it, That's dude. That's perfect. There's, I think there's a subreddit called, like, Not the there Onion is, or something. There is, and it's so good. And it's, like, onion-esque stories. But they are real. But they're fucking yeah. real, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if you've ever seen that, Joseph, but I would, I would definitely uh, recommend that because it, it, it's fun to dive into literally how how the media just eats up fucking everything without vetting it. It kind of so. wears you out, I'll though, because you're looking at it and you're like... This one can't be real. And yeah. it's real. Yeah. And then the next one, you're like, well, there's no way this one's real. <laughs> yeah. like, after like three or four, you're like, I got to do something else. I got to yeah. go outside. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but yeah, I just, I thought that that was worth a mention um, just because, yeah, just fucking absolutely silly. But um, another thing that I wanted to mention kind of uh, leading into all of this stuff was um, the, this one I pulled from Christian today. And I'm sure that uh, both of you guys have have heard of this, but the the Nike Jesus trainers injected with quote holy water from Jordan River, costing three thousand dollars, sell out in minutes. I've not heard about this. So Nike made these shoes, uh, a limited edition Nike Air Max ninety seven. Hold up, is that is that a crucified Jesus hanging off of it? There like is a little... like literally, I guess. Okay. No, no, dude, this is like. I can't believe that this. I well, is, anyway, is this on the onion? This feels like. Oh onion. no, dude! This is love. <laughs> this is fucking legit, man. Um, but anyway, so to to basically say, oh, you know, you're walking. They they call them Jesus shoes or whatever because like they inject the water into the air pocket things. Oh my and, god! And uh, so that you're like walking on water. Sure. <laughs> but uh, dude, people were like. Fuck yeah, I'll take a pair. So, um, this feels very Kanye West. <laughs> oh no shit! Somebody was actually talking about uh, Yeezy shoes. I think actually they were making fun of him on last podcast. Good. <laughs> and they were like, "Dude, have you ever like like felt a Yeezy? It, it's like Kanye West actually like is making these in a basement somewhere. Like, <laughs> like they, they just feel bad. Absolute shit quality <laughs> kind of thing. They're so ugly but, too. Oh yeah, dude. Oh. I've I've never really understood like the the uh, quote shoe game or yeah. whatever shoe people. So, I know. do you know anybody that uh, do either? You guys know any like, like shoe a, like collectors? Like a real like sneakerhead. Yeah, like that. Yeah, no, sneakerhead. That's the term. I love that concept, but I don't know anybody that really yeah. does it. So a cra- a crazy stat on that is that <clears throat> if you um, so part of uh, I had been working in like alternative assets um, yeah. for a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And if you look, if you look at the correlation of sneaker prices mm-hmm. to like like collectible sneaker prices to the rest of investable assets, stocks and bonds, and you know, yeah. and all these, it's it is a fantastic investment. <laughs> really? And, oh yeah, and like sneaker, you know, these sneaker conventions and like you know sneaker heads like buying and kind of flipping and you know whatever yeah. people making money off of these. It's yeah. like a really, really, really crazy, you know, just subgenre of you know of business, yeah. whatever. And wow. uh, yeah, but some of these some of these sneakers go for thousands and thousands of dollars. I know that. Just last little anecdote here. There's a <laughs> there's a shoe store in downtown LA, um, and they'll do you know like special releases. Mm. I'm not I'm not exaggerating. People, you know camping out, sleeping in chairs two, three days before they open their doors. Wow. And, That's in fucking sane, man. And I'm saying, like, you know, lines around the corner. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's just, like, the kind of the same thing with, like, Apple releases, you know, where people will yeah. go and try to buy as many as possible and then, like, flip them on Craigslist, you know, yeah. for twice twice the price or whatever. So it's weird. Megan and I are trying that with Tickle Me Elmo's. <laughs> no, I just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I'm going yeah. to tell you, I'm sitting on, I got about five, 600 Furbies, if anybody <laughs> is interested. <laughs> I really made a bad investment previously. <laughs> Man, I never really understood collecting stuff that you don't use. Like, yeah. if I bought killer sneakers, I'm going to wear them. Yeah, exactly. And I'm clumsy, so, like, within the first week of wearing them, I'm going to, like, trip a little bit, walk in and scuff the toe yeah. and be like, God, these were two thousand dollars <laughs> sneakers. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh man. But yeah, so uh uh I actually used to keep up with um 
this um, gaming, well, they're basically a gaming journalist uh, company called Giant Bomb. And the the dude that started Giant Bomb, um, Jeff Gerstman, he he's like a really big sneakerhead yeah. kind of thing. And so, like, sometimes on the podcast that they run, um, he would talk about, like, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I had to do this, that, and the other, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, they, they I think they do video for their um, podcast, too. And so he was, like, showing them off and shit like that. And, like... <laughs> I just I don't get it. I don't know. It doesn't doesn't make sense to me. So, but um, but hey, man, if you got the if you got the cheddar and that's what you're into, more power to you. <laughs> so. Dude, I've I've seen some girls who are like I used to really follow the beauty community on YouTube, mm-hmm. and some of those girls have like an entire closet for shoes. Really, I, but I think they wear them, but like not that often because yeah. you've got seven hundred pairs of shoes. Like, yeah. how often are you wearing them? But they're just like displayed. It looks mm-hmm. like a boutique store. Well, that's what Megan. Yeah, I was I was talking about. I mean, I can't imagine like the the most expensive probably pair of shoes that I own are my Chacos. Right. You know, because yeah. <laughs> I had to custom order them because yeah. I they don't sell like wide ones, <laughs> and my foot is fat as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think the most I've ever paid for a pair of shoes is I I invested in some decent running shoes. Yeah. For like. 120 yeah. and I still and I was running quite a bit at the time and I still was like oh it's so much yeah <laughs> oh dude I was I was talking to Megan um they they've been doing some uh promo stuff for an event for Junior League of Knoxville yeah. and uh they went to this boutique like shoe shop kind of thing and like three of her friends ended up spending like over fifteen hundred dollars well, well collectively but like still I was like, fuck me, man. That is insane. Dude. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, if you were looking to pick up a pair of the um, limited edition Nike Air Max 97s. Tough uh, shit, I guess. Tough shit, man. Yeah, you're going to have to wait till the next coming. da da All right. <laughs> I'll see myself <laughs> out. <laughs> man, I got, I got a good thing I found this week. Yeah, um, what's up? It's from June, but I just found it this week. All right. And it's from some website called deadstate.org. I don't know how legit this site is, but this is a fun story. Yeah. So the headline says, Christian TV host says, vegetarian hamburgers are a Luciferian plot to change human DNA. (laughs) I'm like scrolling through my news collector thing and I'm like, oh, I'm here for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Meatless Foods is a new food fad that involves companies creating meals. You guys know about all these fake burgers, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, so this dude's out here saying uh, right-wing pastor Rick Wiles on his program called True News <laughs> suggested that meat alternative companies are trying to create the new foods in an effort to alter human DNA in order to cause human beings to no longer be technically classified as humans. I mean, this seems pretty plausible. And then, <laughs> ultimately, then you can't be saved by Christ. Because you're not human. Oh my see? god, yeah. They're out to get you. Fucking loopholes. They're out, so, you know, you're out here eating your Beyond Burger, and you're you're beyond heaven at that point. Dude. Like, you're fucked, you know? Yeah. So It didn't matter if you got a pair of those Nike Air Maxes. <laughs> you can walk, walk on water up. down here in your earthly days, but after that, you're hosed. You are fucked, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's going on, he's like, you're going to the grocery store, and you're buying a pound of fake hamburger, or a fake steak. Listen, first off, are there fake steaks? I don't... I'm not familiar with them. I don't them. think so. Yeah. But you won't know that it was grown in some big corporation's laboratory. Like, Jeez, yeah, dude. yeah, you would. Like, you know it's not real. Like, no one's out here accidentally buying <laughs> Impossible Burgers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, people he, are, people, sorry, I'm just glad. I'm just glad somebody's got the guts to talk about true facts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? This is, the, this is the kind of journalism we really need. Look how grumpy this motherfucker is yeah. in his face. He is, dude, he is, it literally, if you're wondering where the stick is, it's to directly up it's this dude's way ass. way up this guy's ass. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, dude. Man. Um, well, cool, well, you know what, listeners? You heard it here. <laughs> Watch out for the the uh, the al- meat alternative burgers if you're planning on uh, getting through those pearly gates. So. <laughs> but uh, you gotta choose yeah. red meat <laughs> or the uh, wait no fake meat fake. or the afterlife. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh man! All right. Well, um, 
I say we start jumping into some, because uh, that, that's a nice little uh, segue yeah. article. That was a little spook. spooky. Yeah, a little spook. <laughs> but uh, where do we want to start? Uh, what do you got? You got anything good? Um, I'm actually pretty stoked. Let's let's go ahead and throw this uh, a haunted house stuff yeah, out there. Because, yeah. like, dude, it was... So, this well, is big. This well, is national news, even yeah. though it's a Tennessee thing. Yeah. This is huge news right now. Which, this guy has been doing it for a while. Yeah. But, um, anyway, I pulled this from uh, 6 ABC, uh, a local uh, affiliate uh, from ABC, W-A-T-E. Um, scariest haunted house in U.S. requires 40-page waiver, doctor's note, safe word. Um, so, this shit is kind of bizarre, and they... They have, so I actually just kind of uh, skimmed through. They have a two a required two hour video intro that you have to watch before you're allowed to even whatever submit like your whatever doctor's note and all this shit, you know. But um, dude, how long could it even take you to go through this haunted house? So I think that it's a ten. It's a ten hour thing. I'm, I'm sorry, I believe. Oh, that's a... Oh, I didn't no, know that was a thing. Oh, no, 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 dude. This shit... Well, we'll get into it. Dude, I, but, thought, uh, I thought haunted houses were, like, maybe 45 minutes. Oh, no, this like, is this is wow. not... This is not a haunted house. This is, like, an experience okay, kind okay. of thing, you know? So, Fuck um, your escape room. Let's go to the... Did I say escape? Who am I? That's cool. Fuck your escape room. Let's go do one of these. <laughs> but, uh... Honestly, after you just seeing have this... To, you just have to make sure you eat a bowl of biscotti before you go to the escape. <laughs> right? I'm going to go get some espresso, too. Oh, my gosh. I just got back from a real long trip to Massachusetts. Oh, no. My mom says it that way. Oh, and I've I'm tried sorry. to correct her my whole life. I'm like, Mom. Mom. <laughs> or some espresso. I said just espresso. Have, oh, yeah, okay. You know Damn what, it. though? Honestly, guys, I think a lot of this could be summed up if you just got a, a, you know, a good reference book from the library. No! Um. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so this dude, uh, dude's name is Russ, <laughs> Russ McCamey. And uh, I'm just going to read it verbatim from this uh, this article. Wait, Russ isn't McCain- this in Tennessee? Yeah, yes, this is in Tennessee. In so, like, town. All the local news here is covering it, but like I've I've had like three different friends send it to me this week, and it's it's big news. He started. He actually, uh, according to the video, they have m- a multi thousand person um, wait list kind of thing. Um, but anyway, so Russ McCamey owns and operates the most terrifying haunted house experience in America. One you're not allowed to attend until you watch a two hour long video, sign a forty page waiver, create a safe word, pass a physical, and more. So the other shit that's required, uh, you got to be over uh, twenty one or have parents approval if you're uh, over eighteen and under twenty one. You literally have to have a doctor's letter stating that you're physically and mentally cleared. Uh, they do a, uh, you have to sign a background check thing that they're allowed to run a background check on you. And he like stresses all of this shit in the like intro video. And, uh, they, Dude, my they doctor have... would absolutely they'd be like, we, you're a wimp. You've always been a wimp. We're not she letting, can't you can't go to this. <laughs> they, they actually had a guy have a heart attack during this well... experience kind of shit. Um, the funny thing is, is like all of this stuff, like it's, it is weird that the video, the two hour video is like a bunch of testimonials <laughs> and they're showing like some of the shit that actually happens. Yeah. And I mean, like people are literally, the thing that like fucking was bizarre to me was, um, he had, uh, he was basically giving the experience of being buried alive, uh-huh. and he was taking mud and dumping it like people are like bound and everything. You're you have shit over your eyes. You have like ear things on to like so that you're not hearing like much or whatever. And he's dumping mud on your face. Oh, like, I hate all this. Yeah, it's like fucking waterboarding uh-huh. kind of shit. And. Uh, they they had like some guy they had some people in like basically gags and stuff they had everybody was at least blindfolded and had something over their ears to keep them from being able to like hear a whole lot Ugh. they they uh showed people that had like clothes pins like as in like tins of clothes pins clamped on all over their faces and shit 
and uh, basically, like you're getting sl- literally physically slapped around and oh shit. Oh my god! And I mean, like it's 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 like this dude's running this fucking like torture porn. Yeah, thing. and people are into it, man. People are yeah. I mean, <sighs> you it know is who's going really to this? Weird. People who are trying to buy blood lube. Yeah, that's who's exactly, going to this. Exactly, dude. <laughs> but um, they they've never had anybody finish it. Like, and it's been running since, uh, I want to say 2000, I want to say like about maybe five or six years, yeah. something like that. But, um, dude, it is just, it is insane. And so they talk about kind of who this guy is and like, he just, he literally is the epitome of like a person that like you'd meet in a horror movie that it's like, oh yeah, it's just old Russ over there. But then he's into really fucking creepy shit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, like, this dude, I mean, like, he, like, has these people fucking, like, crying and, like, just, like, he's just like, oh, you can do it, you know, you can do it. Oh, yeah, I got the best of you. I got the best of you. Didn't I? Didn't I? Say it. Say oh, it. Like, it's just like. Wait, is, that's it, in the video? Yeah, dude. I mean, it's like, it's yeah, kind dude. of fucking this intense. Guy's, this guy's got. You know, it's it's kind of, it's always really interesting to me when you see when you see things like this because it's like, could you, <laughs> like, is it possible to to be not normal? None of us are normal, but you know what I mean. Like, not yeah. be like have so like does this guy torture like neighborhood animals you know what i mean between well, and that's the that's the other weird thing in the video is or like, could dude, you just be like having fun doing that you know what I mean? well and that's that's the the like he he owns like a shit ton of dogs which oh. is weird also i mean and when i say a shit ton i'm talking about like 10 or 15 dogs yeah yeah and uh like in the the intro video he's like walking around he's just like being like it's just creepy. It's just yeah. creepy in the first place. I feel place, like if but... you're known as the guy who tortures people in this haunted house, like, what are you doing that's not being filmed? Yeah. I'm just saying. And, like, he, he it's like he gets his fucking jollies Yeah, that by really like, sounds like it, yeah. I mean, because he's, they show him editing, like, like I said, I didn't watch the entirety of the two-hour thing because... Ugh. It's just, I mean, it's it's just so much. Y- yeah, you can only watch so many of like people crying yeah. and like whatever. Yeah. But um. But anyway, so like this one part, he's like because he films every experience. You can actually go. I don't know if you can see the entirety of the experience, but you can go online and at least see. He he runs a YouTube channel. Yeah. That you can look up. Excuse me. A bunch of uh, bunch of videos on there, and I kind of looked around on there for a yeah. little bit. But um, man, I want to see that waiver. Is the forty-page waiver online that you could read? I don't know, actually. That's I'm a good to, question. I'm gonna have to dig around for that. Maybe but, somebody. Well, they had people. They had. They actually required the people. Um, a lot of people don't even make it to signing the waiver. Yeah. Because they're basically torturing you while you're like having to like, God. like they they were like dunking their heads in water and shit, and then being like, he's like, don't get that paper, and that's that's another weird thing. Dude doesn't curse, dude doesn't drink, dude doesn't, like, smoke, dude doesn't, like, do anything. He is, like, supremely... Do you have any vices? No, I mean, well, so I torture people all the fucking yeah. time. Excuse me, I don't cuss. As my <laughs> business, yeah. yeah. My business but model is torture. But, but he's got that fish hook rammed so deep in his perineum he can barely stand <laughs> it. <laughs> no shit. Uh, I, I mean, mean, come on, dude. This is... There's like something under the hood, man. Oh, I mean, he's he's like editing the footage on a com- on the computer or whatever during the the video, and he's like, oh yeah, this is a good shot. This uh, is, a-. and it's he's like, I just look at all of it as like you know being like this cinematic experience mm-hmm. or whatever, and I'm like, yeah. And then when you turn the camera off, you beat it. To yeah, the I was crying, just about to say that. You know? It's like fucking a man, but it, it it's some wild shit, and I would definitely recommend people like. They they've got uh, pictures of like people being put in deep freezes, not that are on, but just like for the claustrophobic, you know, whatever effect, and just like really weird shit going uh, on with this this dude. Man, you know, you know, every time like some random dude does some terrible crime, and they've got neighbors that are like, he was always really nice. He yeah. waved when he picked his mail up. Yeah, he was super great. No one can say that about this guy. Like, what? Well, and it's like, the weird thing is, is he talks about like hypnosis oh. and like how he like is able to. He's like, I can put you in a uh, a 
a swimming pool, a, a kiddie pool with you know four or five inches of water, and by by the end I, that I'm by the time that I'm done with you, you'll think that it, a great sh- a great white shark is in there about to fucking attack you. And I'm like, okay, so you mentally break people, and then fucking like. I, it was, Man, I feel just, like a lot healthier way for this guy to express all this shit is maybe write books. Yeah. Maybe direct movies. Yeah. But it's just. It's, I don't know it's if these people really are signing weird. up for it. I mean, they're yeah. consenting. Yeah. No, I mean, everybody's consenting. Yeah. And the, the other weird thing is how easily he, like, turns it off. Like, he'll go from, like, torture Russ to, like, friend Russ <gasps> in, like, 0.2 seconds. No, and then he's no. like. He's like, all right, say the phrase, and like, I think the phrase is like, whatever you sh- you shouldn't you shouldn't want this or some shit right. like that. I can't remember what it was, but um, it's just, dude, it is really, really, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like you guys were saying, if if th- this shit made it to film, what the yeah. fuck isn't making it to film? Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Thought it was pretty cool, though, and it was definitely worthy of uh, episode 72 of the Tether Radio Podcast, <laughs> our, our spook episode. Creeping it so. real. Yeah, exactly. Man, I've got uh, a fun little list thing that I found a long time ago. Yeah, and I, let's do I, it. Like, I hoard fun shit that I find online, and now I'm like dragging up all this old stuff, and I'm like, yeah, i got a place to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I found this list on some website called The Toast, mm-hmm. and it's every Southern Gothic novel ever. Which, it's, you know, it's just making fun. Um, what, what would... Uh, I got you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I was like, I'm I'm a nerd who knows what Southern Gothic is. Like, I'm, <laughs> I get that not everyone's into books. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Southern Gothic focuses on the South's history of slavery, racism, fear of the outside world, violence, a fixation with, with the grotesque, and a tension between realistic and supernatural elements. Is that that painting? Is that called American Gothic? That's American Gothic. Okay. I don't think that's. I mean, I guess it's sort of. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. So anyway. this is um like Faulkner is like Southern Gothic, mm-hmm. like people, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So this is just like parody uh, titles. Gotcha. So I just pulled a few of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the preacher man leered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't speak of what happened to the girl. <laughs> Best not to ask too many questions about the smell coming from the old widder woman's house on Yon Hill. <laughs> on Yon <laughs> Hill, I love that. <laughs> no one listens to what old Pap's got to say on account of this deformity, but I say it's you all what has this deformity in your souls. I knows what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, this is a quote from a book? No, these no, are these are all fake, like they're, yeah, fake they're, titles. they're like fake oh, book fake titles. titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, <laughs> oh really, my god, I was just these could like... be at least chapter titles <laughs> yeah. of of like shit that, that. yeah. Um, <laughs> what else we got? Uh, they always did think too highly of themselves. <laughs> we bury our feelings and our relatives alive. I love that one. <laughs> it's too hot for justice today. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I drink because this house is filthy and all the servants have fled. <laughs> and the last one that I'm going to say, the outsider wore shoes and a smug expression. <laughs> oh, that's There's also a awesome. whole bunch of related lists of like every modernist novel and yeah. every, oh man, there's... I, Man, I bet there's a horror one. I didn't even seek that out. Yeah. I bet there's a horror one. Oh, that's funny as shit, dude. <laughs> My God, I love that. It's the so house fun. on Yon Hill. <laughs> My God, <clears throat> um, well, cool. Well, while we're uh, while we're on books and stuff, we you got wanna, a bunch. You want to hop over into the um, the list? Yeah. So Allie pulled uh, Allie pulled this one, and basically, she's gonna kind of go through some that she's read, and I will uh, opine if I've read it. Uh, probably not most of them, <laughs> but a lot of these were made into movies too. So, mm. and I suck at movies, but you've seen like every movie ever, so you've probably seen the shit ton of these movies. I, I, I made a small list. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> so I really don't know a ton about this site that I found this from, um, but it's called Readsy, mm-hmm. and uh, it looks like just a book website. I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Mm. Um, it seems like a pretty good list, and I don't. They didn't have like really, you know, strict criteria. I think this is just somebody that put together a list. Yeah. So, but it was a good one to go by. Cool. Um, I'm pretty new to horror. <laughs> like, <laughs> I read a whole lot this year, and some of those were horror, and they were really good. And I, I, 
I'm not going to highlight the really obvious things like Frankenstein and mm. like stuff from Poe and Lovecraft. Like, of course yeah. those belong on here, but like, duh. Yeah. Like, that's no fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, the first one I wanted to ask you about is mm-hmm. there was one on here called Rebecca by Daphne de Moyer, I guess is how you say it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know much about it, but I've heard it recommended a ton. So, Do you know anything about it? It's older. No. It's from, like, I was going to take 30s. a look and see what, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm, it doesn't sound like a similar, like... Nothing you know. Yeah, yeah. honestly. But, it's just um, one of those that, like, everybody's like, how have you not read that? And I'm like, I'm just new to horror. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's weird. Haunting of Hill House. You watched so that, right? I watched I watched that, yeah, on Netflix and honestly it was it was really good yeah. until so I'm I'm one of those horror fans that like I don't like good horror or happy <laughs> horror endings. Oh yeah, no. No And Haunting in Hill House, yeah. they, it's like it's Little like it's, it's like uh and then like the last episode they're like, But everybody's good, you know, it's happy, <laughs> you know, hunky dory. Yeah. And I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? Because, like <laughs> It was actually pretty fucking scary yeah. and stuff. So. I've heard the book's good, but it's a lot different. But mm. I've I've not got... To, everybody gets mad at me for not watching that or read that yet. Yeah. And um, Shirley Jackson wrote that. And she also wrote, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. So, um... I know people talk a ton about that. There, was, there was another book uh, that I thought was on here that... Uh, oh, um, maybe I was thinking of... I, I want to. I want to, uh, or I wonder if this isn't kind of along the lines of. I think it was called. It was a. Um, God, who's the the woman that was uh, married to? Um, oh my God, Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, what was her name? Katie Holmes. No, it was Nicole the, Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Okay. I think she was in it. I think it was called like the Others, maybe. And I kind of wonder if it's not along I know what you're talking about. that those lines yeah. because. Yeah, that it was like this weird twist that. Uh, Maybe. Well, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a really weird twist uh, in the at the end that yeah. it's like, oh, we've always lived here, kind oh, of thing, or okay. whatever. Okay. And honestly, it's kind of uh, reminiscent of The Shining. Yeah. Um, or at least the movie The Shining. Yeah. That it's like, oh, you've always been the groundskeeper here, or whatever, <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to mention The Shining being on here, which I have still not seen, and please don't kick me out of but your you've house read it. right now. I read it. I just yeah. read it like yeah. recently. And the, I the book's loved great. It. Yeah. yeah, the book. And I want to watch the movie too. And I, uh, a friend of mine's been telling me about this uh, movie on Netflix. I guess mm. it is the Room Two Thirty Seven that you really, watched. Yeah, fucking super cool documentary about the making of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Yeah, and like all these theories about what it could really be about. And stuff. Yeah, it and, sounds really cool. And honestly, I feel like Stanley Kubrick was one of those guys that. It like if if it seems like it was like it could was be a, he yeah. yeah like he was entirely too he I, I remember watching something about how he treated Shelley Duvall like fucking shit on on set yeah to keep her like almost like terrified and like oh. uneasy and stuff but dude he got a fucking phenomenal performance out yeah. of her so yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Joseph and I have had this conversation a decent bit, but it's like, dude, when, when you, uh, when you take into account what people have to go through in order to achieve these things, like being the, the absolute apex of a musician or actor or whatever, I mean, dude, um, we talked about that, didn't we, Joseph? I think in, in regards to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that it's like just the the mental fucking like breakdown that these these people have to endure. Yeah, in order to achieve greatness. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, like I've heard about like Daniel Day Lewis being yeah. like insane. Yeah, because he just gets so into the parts he plays. Yeah, and I mean like um, uh, Heath Ledger when he yeah. was like getting ready for Joker. Man. Yeah, I mean it was just like these these uh, what is it what what is the type of acting called? I, I was trying. It's called method. Method Thank acting, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, but how do you? I mean, that's that's the interesting part, right? Like, I think that the, one of the reasons that I mean, this is a total side note, but like one of the reasons that like everybody's all about these you know pieces of artwork and these artists or whatever is they're able to you know tap into something that it's like is ubiquitous. Everybody knows is inside them, but other people yeah. can't tap into. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like yeah, that's yeah. why these themes are 
seem to be seem to resonate with everyone but it's like mm-hmm. yeah man i mean honestly like <laughs> i read that story too they know yeah. about shelly duvall it's like <laughs> you know it's it's wild but i mean yeah the performance was there just quick yeah. note have you have you guys ever seen that video of um it's like rip torn um and somebody else and I, i'm drawn a total blank on who the director was but uh-huh. Rip Torn's like super method, right? Uh-huh. And um, in this uh, in this film, he was like gearing up for this role, and mm. uh, he he pulled out a hammer, a real hammer, and started beating the director with a oh. real hammer. And then they get into this what? fist fight, and somebody's filming it, and it's not it's not like they're filming it. But it's this is not part of the film, right? Yeah, yeah. And like it's, documentary it's, or documenting it's, like a filmmaking kind of thing. Yeah, and it's rip torn. Like you know, he's like beating this dude, and then the other guy beats him and bites part of his ear off. God, and it's like, what in the fuck, dude? I'll send you guys. I'll send you guys a clip. It's like a really, really like famous clip. And rip torn's like, insane. I gotta do it to you, baby. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like beating him. You know? yeah. and, then, and then the the director's <laughs> wife is like crying in the background. I was like, "Please stop!" Like, oh my so god! Good. But but part of the of of that, and they he literally was just so antagonistic, you know, to this guy mm-hmm. that they just hated each other. But it's supposed to be like an incredible film, and like you know, yeah. uh, really, really have some like raw performances. But it's like you know, yeah. I mean, Who's to it's, say? I guess. Yeah. Well, and and the thing is, is I mean, I, I don't know what movie that was, but I dare say that it, it was probably, you know, probably it, well done. Yeah. It, at least his character was probably pretty, you know, yeah. fucking solid. Yeah. So. It, it's Rip Torn and Norman Mailer, and the, it's called uh, Maidstone. Was the movie that they were doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you guys now. Yeah, cool, cool. do it up. Um, all right. Yeah, The well, Shining cool. was just like it was really cool for me because. When I, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too, but I think a lot of people think of horror as a genre is just scary. Yeah. And like horror can be so many, I mean, just negative feelings. Like just the, mm-hmm. the tension of the book, The Shining. Mm-hmm. Every time I picked it up to read it, I was excited to read it, yeah. but I was so like anxious and yeah. just dreading what was going to come. Yeah. And I was like physically like wound up. Like I was, I was like physically kind of like clenching my like shoulders up to my yeah. ears and stuff like reading it and i i liked it and i wanted to keep reading it but like it's just it's unclear and you don't really know what's going on you don't know yeah. what i didn't know what was coming or anything because like i i really went into the shining blind and that was such a cool way to do it but yeah. yeah it was just it was cool for me to be like hey horror does not just have to be fear yeah it can be so many other you know existential dread and yeah, stuff like that and that, sure. that was really neat yeah yeah and i mean like you're just watching this dude like whatever lose his mind cla- yeah, yeah collapse into madness yeah. kind of shit but um hey yeah. hey guys so i just this is bad for radio but I, you'll get a kick <laughs> out of it i just texted you um gotcha. a photo yeah, a cool. photo of martha's sister dressed up like shelly duvall <laughs> oh, that's so good <laughs> that is fucking amazing dude <laughs> Look at her that cry is, face. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. So good. She totally has the perfect cry face, and the the, the overalls that Shelly Duvall like wore the whole time, or Those whatever. Are, that's a good costume. Yeah, wow. that's a really good costume, yeah. man. And also, man, if you guys, uh, if any listeners or whatever, if you've got like a fucking cool costume or whatever, tweet it out to us. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll retweet, retweet it. Yeah. And fucking, we we. This is probably my favorite month. Dude, so. I love it. I um, love. I love scary. I was shit. so sad because I went to a Halloween party last night and I kept being like, "Oh, I can't believe it's over." And I'm like, "Wait, Halloween's not till Thursday. Yes. It's not over." Yes. And also, <laughs> like, I can read spooky shit anytime. I can watch weird shit. I can. Yeah. I can look at Halloween costumes on Pinterest any time of the year. I guess oh, totally, you know. But... Totally. <laughs> Candy is always there. Yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah, are you a fan of uh, of? Uh... Um, God, I'm drawing a blank. A good, the book is a good man is hard to find. Uh, I don't think I know it. Um, hang on. Uh, uh, let's see. I want to make I feel sure like that it sounds like right. vague. Yeah, Flannery familiar. O'Connor. Man, I've been meaning to read some of. I just don't. I don't know any of them. Yeah, dude, dude, you will. Yeah. Absolutely flip your wig, man. Yeah. That, the book, a good man, uh, dude. The, a good man is hard to find. Is 
it's cr- it's just crazy that it was written when it was written, you know. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, won't, I won't give you, I won't spoil it, but it's just like I, I like a, a, a family goes out on like a trip, and it's like a mm-hmm. grandmother and a family and whatever, and they're having some car trouble, and then it's like all hell breaks loose, and it's like yes. this written in the 30s or 40s, and it is wild but anyway I, yeah. I'd love to was hear there, your opinion on it yeah I just made myself a note and my I have like an ongoing like list of cool things to check out <laughs> what's uh, uh was that uh, adapted into a movie because for some reason that sounds I, I might just have heard of the book but uh I don't know if it was or not Flannery mm. O'Connor is is uh you know kind of a is I think fairly well known in so, with Southern authors. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. I'm not. I would like to get a list from you, Ali, because I'm you. I bet you're you're you know better read on those than than I am, and I'd I'd love. Man, to just I've really start I've not through. read much like Southern. Uh, like I don't think I've ever even read Faulkner at all. Mm-hmm. Like um, I've not read a lot of Southern Gothic. I just yeah. I think I just like it in theory, but like I probably would like it if I read it. Yeah, so apparently um, it was adapted into a, a short story film uh, entitled Black Hearts Bleed Red uh, in 92 by Jerry Kane Rossi. Hmm. So, hmm. and it was, I don't know, I've, I've never heard of it. It starred Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. you have seen it. <laughs> Uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, yeah, classic man, classic. I think I think Drew Barrymore was in it. <laughs> yeah, I think she did that like right after um, I don't know, Fifty First Dates or something. So, but uh, man, okay, so this list, yeah. I did not know The Exorcist was even a book. I did not know that either. I like. Don't tell me you haven't seen The Exorcist. I've never seen The Exorcist. No! I'm so no! bad. You know I'm bad at movies. Like, honestly, of all I know. horror movies, I know. Like that is that is the one that everyone needs to see yeah. once. Okay, so I was a huge chicken growing up. Mm-hmm. And I'm still, I, I'm wary of gore. But, like, I can do, like, old school gore, like, stuff mm-hmm. from, like, the 70s or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, like, the new stuff that looks real, I can't. Like, I cannot watch somebody tell, tearing out their own intestines or something. Yeah. Like, that's not for me. There's, there's definitely, But, yeah. like, I totally, <laughs> I'd be fine with watching The Exorcist. I would have been fine with it, like, probably as a kid. Because, yeah. like, I watched Carrie in middle school. and Carrie's it didn't even freaky. It didn't even bother me. Uh-huh. So, Carrie was weird, uh... I was trying to remember. Oh yeah, because it it ends really weird too. But um, I definitely don't remember because it's been forever. Yeah, but I mean, it was the, uh, the tragedy Sissy of Carrie Spacey is it. it could have all been avoided if she just would have covered her dirty pillows. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the mother in that fucking movie is insane. You know, Mama, <laughs> no, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your dirty pillows. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, one that's on here that I've been meaning to get to that I am being wimpy about is uh, Clive Barker. Uh, he's supposed to be just amazing, and Books of Blood is listed on this list. Um, did you read a, Dracula? Yeah, I read Dracula. I did. I liked it. Because I was I I actually have never read it, but I heard that it was like pretty slow going. I mean, it's definitely thing. slow, but like it's yeah. you can you can see why it was so influential. Like it, yeah. was, it was cool as hell. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Books of Blood though from Clive Barker is mm-hmm. supposed to be like where to start as far as if you want to start reading his stuff. Mm-hmm. So I like I heard it's it's really really like people recommend it all the time. Like I follow a dude on Instagram who's like. His his name his username is based on like a story from that yeah and I'm like oh yeah I gotta I gotta check that out so I go to Goodreads and I go to like add it and I think I actually whimpered reading the like oh, description really? I was like this is gonna be tough oh shit dude <laughs> like I mean it's just a gore fest yeah but it's supposed to be great so I'll oh I'll God. get there sometime all I'll, right this, I'll have to yeah this one's you what's, it. What's... It, oh my you gotta God. talk about it. I, I, how long we got, dude? I noped out. Of, I was gonna read that in October, and then I, I didn't. So. so, so I am currently five percent, according to my Kindle, uh, <laughs> from finishing the book. It, and I swear to God, I feel like I've been literally reading this book since the beginning of 2019. <laughs> um, that's not true. I've made you read a couple books since then. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I took some interim breaks, but uh, but no, it it is just the. It's really 
well written, but I think that it's it's it a little too long winded. Like, have you met Stephen King? <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's the I thing is, him. I thought the pacing was a lot better with uh, The Shining. Yeah. And it's like you have this like up and down. Let me t- give you the history of the hotel a yeah. little bit and all yeah. this stuff. But it's like this is involving like seven separate people with seven completely different backgrounds, and he goes into like super in depth ad nauseum yeah. kind of thing. And so, I mean, sometimes you're just sitting there reading and you're like, man, I don't care that this character had, like, two brothers, five, you know, sisters, and, you know, his parents weren't together anymore, and now that one of them lives in Connecticut and the other lives... And it's just, like, it it seemingly, to me, yeah. completely irrelevant yeah. details. I, like, there, I love Stephen King, mm-hmm. but sometimes I'm reading this stuff and I'm like... Do you use an editor just yeah. ever? Well, it's almost like a stream of consciousness yeah. instead of like a fucking story at like, times. The Shining so. was a complete masterpiece, and I don't really think it had... Like, it, it was a slow burn the whole time, but it worked. Yeah. But, like, have you ever read The Stand? No, dude, I mean, like, is that longer or shorter than it? It's right about the same. It's, it's yeah. about 1,100 See, I, pages. I think I started it and got, like, literally maybe, like, 200 pages in, and I was like... I don't think I want to. I chugged through it. Yeah. I read the unabridged bastard of a giant <laughs> book. Yeah. And I, it was great, but they could have cut out like 400 pages in yeah. the middle. And I, I just kept reading being like, okay, um, so something's going to happen any time now. Yeah. So something <laughs> else. Joseph, did you ever read The Stand? I did read The Stand. It's yeah? a, it is a tome. I mean, it is like, <laughs> it is like, it is a book, it is a weapon, it is a carjack, it is a yeah. cinder block, it is many things. When people tell me that's their favorite book, or even their favorite Stephen King book, I'm like, mmm, you should read more. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody says that, I'd be like, prove it. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, oh, so go just on. For, Figure out a way to prove it. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. Um, kind of in the the same light in regards to uh, still still sticking with horror yeah. um, and things that could have been pared down a little bit um, for the movie lovers, the cult movie lovers out there. Midsummer, yeah. we got around to watching that, and I can't remember if I mentioned it on. A previous podcast so. or not, but because I don't think you'd even told me about it. I don't think. Yeah. I, yeah. So really, really fucking good uh, movie. I think the same person that did Hereditary mm. uh, is is involved with it. At that least sounds right. And uh, dude, really fucking good. Like the the cult mentality stuff is just terrifying to me. Yes. Because it's it's one of those things like the shit that really scares me is stuff that actually exists. Yeah. Like. Insanity yeah. Yeah. and people just being brainwashed yeah. and stuff like this is documented. This is fucking real, yeah. and it can happen, yeah. kind of thing. And um, like look man, at Jonestown, yeah, like, exactly, you know? yeah. Mm. And so uh, it's just a. It, but having said that, it, it was like a little bit shy of. Well, I think it was maybe two and a half hours, something like that, or maybe a little over two and a half. Yeah. And, dude, it could have easily been, like, an hour and 45 minutes, yeah, yeah, you know? And yeah. it's just, like, we're but, but at the same time, there's a whole lot of, like, this, like, really creepy um, music while, uh, while they're, like, zooming in slowly, oh. and, and it's, like, slow motion, yeah. or, like, kind of slowed down motion. So it's that dread. Like it's yeah, that, and yeah. it's, like, yeah, it, it liter- it's really good at, at creating that, like, stomach yeah. churn kind of thing, but... Isn't but it, it was good. Isn't I would it recommend category? it. Someone told me that. Um. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that's yeah. why I've not got around. Also, it's, I just never watch movies. Yeah. <laughs> the, another one, kind of, and I think I did mention this one on a previous uh, podcast. But the the invitation kind of is in the same light, and I, in my opinion, maybe a little bit more approachable. I think that's on my list. Yeah, it's on. I think it's still on Netflix. I think. I think. I think my buddy told me about it recently, and I yeah. have it. But yeah. uh, Joseph, have you seen uh, either of those, man? I have not. I did see Hereditary, loved it. I saw mm-hmm. one um, not too long ago. I don't think it's a new film, though. Did you see the mm-hmm. one with the hunters that go back in the woods and uh, and then they um, 
they're they're like hunting and then they're they like stumble on like a cult that like uh-huh. captures people and like and like sacrifices them to this like tree mm. demon. Have God, you seen that? Sounds this? Really, that sounds Dude, really familiar. I can't remember what it's called. It's fantastic. It is yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. incredible. I'll make a note. Yeah, and I can't I can't remember, but as I, I think it may have even been a foreign film, and I think I found it on like Netflix or whatever a year or so ago. And and then the other one was which is kind of borderline um, uh, horror film. Did you see the one where, yet again, two hunters, these like uh, two uh-huh. Irish dudes or English dudes, go up to the countryside to hunt, and one of them inadvertently like shoots a kid. He thinks it's a uh-huh. deer, and he like shoots another hunter, and then they like uh-huh. have to like cover it up. Have you seen this one? That sounds kind of familiar, man. It really does. It's, it's it's a really 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 good one, but um, I wow. really want to see Midsummer. I what were, what were your guys' thoughts on Hereditary? Just out of curiosity, uh, <laughs> Daniel loaned it to me, and I just <laughs> brought it back because I'm like, I never watch movies. Yeah. I'm the worst. Appear, apparently, the only two movies that Megan and I actually <laughs> like suggest to friends are The Witch with the two V's or whatever, which is great. Or if it's it's fantastic. Yeah, Dude, everybody says I'm, I'm going to have to watch it. Their their portrayal of what like an like fucking old timey like witch yeah. kind of it's terrifying. It's yeah. like this this like old woman with hair that's down to like her ass, and she's naked out in the woods and just like doing all this weird shit Ooh. and like. That's the one with the goat, right? Yes, and What's fucking name? goat's What's eyes. His name black something. Oh yeah, what was his name? I can't remember. It's like black and then like a person's name. It's like Black Daniel or, or black, something like that. No, it's not. Uh, I don't it's know. It's not Daniel. I'll look you it remember up. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that goat so much. I had it saved as like a like a background on my phone. And Daniel's like, oh, you like the witch? And I was like, I, what? Who? <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. I just found this and it's a cool picture. Black Philip. Like, I told you it was a person's name. Black Philip. Yeah, dude. It's, it's creepy. Plus, the um, I, I feel like... If you watch it, you have to really, really pay attention because yeah. they're speaking in old English, and it's kind of tough to keep up with. Yeah. But if you if you basically if you basically just try, kind of try to get the context out of it, yeah, then you're good enough. Yeah. You know, yeah, you don't yeah. have to literally understand exactly what they're saying. Yeah. But um, anyway, super it's super hardcore. The, it's called the ritual. That was the one. I, I have seen it. I, I have I've seen heard it, of that. but it's been a while. The ritual. I, I and, have seen and I that think shit. I, I think I butchered it a little bit. They weren't hunting; they were just hiking. Uh, yeah, but it was. But they still shot somebody. Um, no. So they no, were. This was the, the they were yeah, just out. And I think I, I think I can. Oh right. I think I conflated a couple of plots there because I don't think they. Okay. I don't think they were hunting. I think what happened was they're hiking and somebody gets injured. I think that's oh, it. Okay. And then they're looking okay. for like help. Or whatever, but I, do, I, I I know I've seen that, but it's been a while. I would highly, highly recommend it. Like yeah. it is, it is, it's pretty damn good. And it was like a a sleeper, man. You know, you yeah, didn't, you didn't yeah. Sleep up. Well, um, and then there was another one that I was going to mention. Um, that I, I don't know. I'll see if it if it comes back, but um. Uh yeah, let's let's keep cruising. I guess what what else we got? Um, out there? House of Leaves. You ever heard of that book? Hmm. Oh my god. Ugh. Joseph, do you know the book House of Leaves? Um, I do know the book House of Leaves, and it is. I have two copies, and it is <gasps> fucking amazing. Have well, you, damn you read brother, it? hook it up. You read it? <laughs> um, have you? I, so I have read it, but I would be a liar to tell you that I'm I completely comprehended it the first time yeah it sounds like um, one of those yeah. yeah yeah but it's it is a layered yes. uh like <laughs> it's a meaty tale <laughs> yeah, yeah well sure. that and i've not read it but i've like everybody has said it's great but i've picked it up at the bookstore a couple times and uh, it makes me furious to pick it up because yeah. It's written chaotically, like, on the page. Yeah. So, like, sometimes it's written upside down or, like, in a spiral on the page or, like, Wait, the what? words run off the page. And I'm just like, this looks like a printing fuck up and I'm mad again. And I put it up. <laughs> I probably picked it up five times. Like, yeah. And I, but I think it's a lot of people's, like, it's that book that you, you mean to read and you try and you fail. So, yeah. like, 
That's Infinite Jest for me. I have yeah. tried to read Infinite Jest four, maybe five times, and every time I get about 200 pages in, I'm like, oh, I'm bored, and I go That was something Tropic else. of Cancer for me. I don't, who wrote that? Uh, well, who was it, Joseph? Because Joseph gave it to me, and I was like, man, I can't do it. <laughs> um, I think it was, let me look it up real quick, uh, it was Henry Miller. Henry Miller, yeah, I wanted to say Miller. I had no hmm. idea, but yeah. but it was uh, what it was written in the when when was that show? Written? I think it was written in like the 30s or 40s, but it was banned because it yeah. was it's it is insanely graphic. But yeah, um, but it's it's a uh, it's really really good. Um, yeah, it's really good. Did, um, did you ever read? Uh, did either of you guys ever read Clockwork Orange? I never read it. Clockwork Orange. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about a I've heard difficult it fucking read? Yeah. I literally got a, a chapter into it. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's literally written... In, in their weird dialect, right? Yeah. I've heard that, to, the, yeah. to the extent to where you... Most of the time, you don't even know what the fuck they're talking yeah. about kind yeah. of thing, you know? But, um, anyway, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead and cruise. Um, what else we got? Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill, um, who's Stephen King's son. Um, mm-hmm. his, I love his stuff. Really? He wrote Horns. Uh, did you ever see that? Daniel uh, Radcliffe was in it. I, I can't remember if I saw it or I just watched the trailer for okay. it. But, okay, um, Super weird. Yeah. Really good story. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. Um, God, that always, that made me think of this. Have you ever heard of the movie Teeth? Yeah. And it's like vagina yeah, detonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I love it, man. Uh, I actually meant to bring you Heart Shaped Box because it's really cool. This, there's like a retired rock star and he collects spooky shit that he yeah. buys on like eBay. And he buys some dead guy's like uh, suit, I think, like yeah. his, like an outfit the guy had worn, and it's supposedly haunted. Yeah. And this guy doesn't really buy into that stuff. He just likes collecting creepy shit. Yeah. But then it is haunted, and it like ruins his life. Oh, it's geez, such a dude. good book. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then Bird Box is on here, and I love you... Bird Box. Okay, so you saw it. I, mean, I, you, I read you, it. You read it because it was going to be a movie, and the movie yeah. sounded cool. So I re- it was a really quick read. Mm-hmm. Um. The movie was go- was good, mm-hmm. but the book was great. So the I think it was kind of off putting to me that Bird Box came out so uh, so close to um, A Quiet Place, which yeah. was literally it was like these sensory thrillers. Yeah, yeah. That, that it was I heard like, a lot oh. of people compare them, and I I would get so defensive. I'm like Bird Box was a book for like a few years before. It- no. <laughs> oh no! And because everybody see, thought Bird Box ripped off Quiet Place, and I'm like, no, no. Yeah. So uh, I would much rather probably. I, I wish I would have read the book Bird Box yeah. rather than see it because I, I wasn't a, a super big fan of the the, the movies, Netflix. It's not uh, great, adaptation. and I, I think I only liked it as much as I did because I had already read the book. Yeah. But like. The book creeped me out so much. Like there was a day I was at my old job mm-hmm. and I was reading it on my lunch break. At, like, a Salsaritas. Mm. Middle of the day, like, decent, like, nice weather, sunny, crazy day. Like, yeah. 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm reading it, and I'm so creeped out that I, like, I finish a chapter, and I, like, you know, put my tray away, and I go to leave to go back to work. And yeah. I get in my car, and I'm parked by this very small tree, and, like, a just tiny branch, like touched my shoulder and i screamed <laughs> and i'm not i am not that person yeah and yeah. i seriously i got in my car and i was like you stupid bitch just calm down <laughs> that's in a book everything's fine yeah like it's oh, oh man it just it really got to me yeah but it was really good because it was just really like it was scary mm-hmm. but it just had that like that dread and you wonder where it's going but they had a lot more like i guess you'd call it world building where like mm-hmm. In the movie, you you just like, well, shit happened, and now this is how the world is. And like in the book, they went on for a while, like yeah. explaining all that going like down, like the transition almost yeah. kind of to the so it was really cool, like, yeah, or like, it took like a few weeks uh-huh. in the book, mm-hmm. and in the movie, it was like, whoop, the world ended, yeah, everything's fucked, yeah, exactly. So like, I really like that part of it, but I I like stuff that's like into the world and like how this plague started or yeah. how uh, like you know. watching yeah watching the world collapse yeah like almost. patient zero shit for like um, zombie stuff did you ever did you ever read uh world war z yeah it was well, fucking that, great that was, that was great. A really joseph did you ever read that one i never read the book saw the movie the movie's fucking trash Is movie, it? Movie yeah. i didn't trash. see the movie because it was garbage yeah. <laughs> garbage <laughs> that book's really good like even if you're not a zombie person i feel like that could be like a 
just you like still get somebody into zombie stuff yeah because like it, it it goes like pretty pretty deep into like geopolitical shit yeah like and watching the world collapse yeah. with this you know so yeah. definitely would recommend that yeah one, but, I, uh, I think bird box is also like kind of a gateway book like even if you're not into like apocalyptic stuff or yeah. horror stuff it's it's all realistic enough yeah that you could convince someone like hey maybe you do like apocalyptic yeah. stuff give this one a chance yeah, yeah yeah i think the 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 book that really fucked with my head the most um was actually amityville horror yeah um, now, granted, I think it was kind of also the time that I was reading it yeah. because I was, I think I was in like sixth grade, seventh oh, yeah. grade, something yeah. like that. And I had talked to my mom uh, about it and she was like, all right, look, we'll get it for you because I'm all about, you know, you reading and stuff and basically playing less video games. <laughs> but dude, I actually had to stop reading it because I started having night terrors yeah. and like I would get up, I'd wake up in the middle of the night. And, um, basically the, the bathroom in our old house was, you, you pretty, pretty much walked directly out of my room and then hung a left and you were in the bathroom kind okay. of thing. And so I wake up, I have to go to the bathroom and I like, uh, we had like a little nightlight or something out in the hall and like, there's just this figure standing in my doorway and like, it's just it was, I swear to God, like, you couldn't have talked me out of the fact that somebody was standing there, but it was Whoa. like a complete and utter silhouette. Yeah. So you didn't see any features, didn't see anything. It's just this person standing there, like, watching me oh. kind of thing. And I was like, <clears throat> pull the sheets back <laughs> over my head. And I was just like, oh my God, I'll just piss myself. Yes. I don't care. Like, this is it. This is how I die. <laughs> yeah. But it was terrifying. Yeah. And that and then, um, uh, I had this other one that I I went to the bathroom and uh, it would on, honestly this was probably me conflating uh, this book and um, the movie the polter or polter guys yeah. that it's like when he goes in the bathroom basically like pulls his face off or whatever I don't know if you've ever seen nope. it but again um, Joseph I've, you, I've never you know seen that anything. scene right oh yeah yep yep, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> face comes but off the glove yeah so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, so I, I went in the bathroom and I like turned on the, the faucet or whatever. And for some reason, the lights went like red and like not, it wasn't like, you know, I didn't start pulling my face off or anything, but I was <laughs> but like, you thought about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it definitely crossed my mind. But no, I was just like looking in the mirror or whatever. And just like, I'm like, why, why are the lights red? Why yeah. are the light, you know? And just like, it's just weird. So I was like, all right, fuck this book. I'm not going to read it. But <laughs> But yeah, so. Um, what else? Okay, we're we're near the end of the list. I swear. Yeah. Um, Horror Store by Grady Hendrix is on here, and I grabbed this uh, from the library this summer and read it, and it was so much fun. I told you about it. Yeah, it's the one that's like it's in like a knockoff IKEA. Yeah, and the the they're convinced somebody's like breaking in and like doing minor fuckery in yeah. the middle of the night. So like. One of their supervisors is like, let's a couple of us stay and have an overnight shift and watch yeah. for these hooligans. And it turns out the place is haunted. That's, Dude, that's not a spoiler. I mean, like, you know that it's going to be something like yeah. paranormal. That but seems like a really fucking good premise for a movie. It, it would be such right? a good... Because I'm like, if you've ever been in an Ikea, you can picture everything that they're describing in this book. Yeah. And it's so cool. But yeah. I don't know if they might run into, like... Uh, if Ikea might cease and desist them if they try to do oh, it. Oh, got you. Yeah. I don't, I don't like know. Like too, too uh, close of a resemblance yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, because like, there's not really a knockoff Ikea. Yeah. There's nothing that compares to it. Yeah. So like yeah. that'd be pretty blatant. Yeah. Um, like you'd know. And yeah. plus they like, all the furniture has those weird Swedish names and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so like at one point they're like hiding in like I don't know, like a like a tall cabinet thing mm. and, and it's it's called like a gefilte fish or something crazy you know but yeah, like it's, totally. it's got some goofy name <laughs> but the book's really fun and if you if you actually see a paper copy of it like a physical copy of it um it looks like an ikea catalog from the front but it's got the word horror store printed on it very, yeah. the, but like oh, there's like awesome. the umlaut over the o and everything yeah. like it, it was a really fun story and it was very like 
I'm like, I thought this was supposed to be horror. And then, yeah. like, when the horror kicks in, you're like, oh, okay. Okay, this is horror. Yeah. So, uh, I actually had a question about a book on the list. Yeah. Did you ever read uh, Let the Right One In? No, but uh, Jesse, my husband, is obsessed with, I think there's two movies or maybe three. So, Let the Right One In was the original one that was uh, the foreign film. Okay. And then they did Let Me In. Yeah. Um, and but I don't know about a third. Okay, but there may just be, be right. two. I don't. There. I don't know. Dude, but he's, the original, he's seen at least two, and he loves them. The, the literally the one of the last scenes in the movie. There, there's a swimming pool scene. I'm not going to ruin anything, yeah. but basically the premise is um, this kid. Uh, this kid befriends a child vampire kind mm, of thing. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, Absolutely one of the most incredible scenes, I swear to God, that I've ever seen. Really? Like, yeah. The, the Did you ever see that, Joseph? I absolutely love that movie. I absolutely yeah. love it. Do you that. remember the, the swimming pool scene at the end when he, like, jumps in and then, like, the person's, like, getting dragged around? Yes. Oh. Yep. And it's just like, dude, it is it is done so fucking well. Yeah. It's really great. It's just like... Yeah, yeah, it is. It is just phenomenal. But yeah. um, and but Jesse, I sure if Jesse's you... not into horror. Yeah, but like when he ends up watching it, he ends up loving it, and I'm like, yeah. mm, you're into it. You know yeah. that, right? Yeah, right. Uh, uh, yeah. And another one that I saw that kind of reminded me of my my childhood is uh, <laughs> something wicked this way comes. I don't know anything about it. So. I, I actually don't have a hell of a lot to say about it, but I remember watching it as a kid. I'm pretty sure I mean, we um, didn't we watch that like down at uh, Ben and Katie's house at some point. Our cousins, yeah, and it was super creepy, man. Because we were, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was super. It was really scary. Yeah, because we were like all like middle school yeah. and stuff, and just like it was, it was really, it was creepy. Man, was you're scared. Creepy. Like you're scared of your own shadow when you're like 13. Oh you yeah, star, you yeah, know? yeah so. totally. So totally. so just a quick, a really quick story, Ali, which may, Daniel yeah. may or may not have told you. One time we prank called this our cousin. Amazing. Yeah. And we told her that she we knew she was home. Alone. Like our houses were very close to each other out in the country. Yeah. And we yeah. told we told her that uh, a convict had escaped at the jail. <laughs> and then we, I we were just letting her know. Sure. And we just wanted <laughs> Wait, to know, did yeah. she know it was you calling? Uh, oh yeah. Totally. Okay. Oh, you're yeah. just and like, we hey, just heads like, up. Yeah, we were like, heads up. It's kind of weird. We just heard this, whatever. And then we went on. We went down to her house and put on a wig and a trench coat. No. And ran around outside, <laughs> and we're like making noises so that she would specifically like look outside. And stuff. <laughs> how, how old was she? she about we, about we were all that was like probably up. yeah that was middle school up, dude. Oh, dude, dude I, I just told fun. my mom a few months ago, and I like I feel really bad for having told her this because I, I think she felt really guilty. But like I was telling her like how you're just afraid of everything when you're in middle school. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I, uh, mom and dad were both working, and I would ride the bus to my grandmother's house, but she had to go across town to pick up another cousin of mine. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would, I, w- I was, like, seventh grade, so I had a key to the house, and I would get off the bus, and I would, uh, I couldn't go to my own house, because uh, the bus didn't run there. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would, I would go in, and I'd be by myself for, like, 20 minutes, maybe, yeah. if that. And I was just scared out of my mind yeah. the whole time. Like, I of what? The, the neighborhood was fine. Everything yeah. was fine. The door was locked. It's the middle of the day. Like, what are you... So- and yeah. I just had this feeling that someone was going to break in and torture me and kill me. Like, Jesus. every single day. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, why? Why was yeah. I so terrified of... What? Yeah. <laughs> and mom Jeez, was like, dude. "Why were you? You should have talked to us about it." And I was yeah. like, "Well, there wasn't anything you could do. Like, yeah, there was no you way can't be to around make me, me constantly. Yeah, like thing, you yeah. can't leave work to hang out with me for twenty minutes until she can get back from picking up Spence. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't. <laughs> oh God, man. Yeah, the, the, there was another time I think. Uh, and Katie, if you're listening, we love you, <laughs> and we're sorry that we mildly tortured you. Um, if I were Katie and you had done that to me when I was staying at Mamaw's <laughs> house by myself for 20 minutes, yeah. I would probably hate you to this day. Dude, our, and this is, the, this is the thing. Our cousin is like absolutely the sweetest, kindest person that you'll like ever fucking meet. Uh, and you we, guys tortured we her. Tortured her so. <laughs> but um, this this other time, uh, or it, I don't know if it was the same time or 
um, she had gotten scared about something and like we went down to go check on her and she had pulled the phone into the bathroom and locked the bathroom door and had a, ba- a baseball bat in the bathroom Aww. or whatever because she was like so terrified yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But she, I don't know, I guess she was just left at home alone a lot or something. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, so... Speaking of uh, scaring people, I I'd had a little note to tell the story. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I think that Joseph has actually seen the, the film of it. But um, so I got uh, me and some buddies in high school got really into looking into local haunted houses or mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, there was a house off of Ebenezer that I think now it has uh, it's been demolished. Okay. But it was. Um, Whatever, it was uh, abandoned and all this shit. And basically, people just, like, squatted there, I guess. Um, So we went up to it, and we found, like, some some paint. And I think we actually took paint with us, like, red paint. And um, we, we, like, basically set it up to look scarier than it actually was. And then we told these chicks that we went to high school with... We were like, dude, we went to this like haunted house the other night, blah, blah, blah. It was so scary, blah, 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 you know? And uh, we were like, uh, would you guys ever want to go? And they're like, oh, yeah, definitely, you know? So three of them um, came, came over to my buddy Ryan's house, and uh, we, well, previously, we had sent another buddy already to the house yeah. to plant him yeah. or whatever, And, uh, so we take these girls up there and I'm like, I'm like filming or whatever. And I've got like whatever night mode on. So it looks like fucking Blair Blair Witch Witch. kind of shit. Yeah. And I think this was even probably around the time that that was popular. Yeah. But, um, anyway, so we go into the house and like, uh, our buddy Ward, he was like, he was just like making little noises and stuff and just kind of like walking back and forth and just making sure that it's, you could you're thinking you're, you're hearing shit. Yeah. You are hearing you shit, are. but it's not like yeah. super, you know. Yeah. Well, um, so we like start looking around and we like set some stuff up so it looked like ritualistic or something, Ooh. you know, and had some like through some paint, you know, places and shit. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, which obviously, hell, if it's fucking blood, it's gonna be like black at this right? point, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless it just happened, but. We didn't think about that. Yeah. Shit. So no. so we get these girls into this house, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, like, do you guys hear that? Like, blah blah blah. Well, we get in, and my buddy Ward takes this door and just slams it Ooh. as hard as he can. I'm like, ah, oh my god, let's get out of here. I don't know what the fuck's in here. And dude, there is a part of the video that I have. Yeah that all three of the girls were trying to get out this one door at the same time, and it looked like a fucking Three Stooges skit. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, so they run out, and, like, we run outside, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck was in there, but, like, we need to leave now. Well, at this point, we get down to Ebenezer, where the, uh, for for the uninitiated, uh, Ebenezer is a uh, pretty big road in Knoxville, and it's got sidewalks on both sides. We get down to the sidewalks, and uh, Ward comes out of the woods, and he's like, ah, oh, you know, like, and so we take off running. One of the girls just breaks down. She goes, I can't run that fast. Oh, my God. <laughs> just like. That is it was, such a thing that happens in a horror movie. Dude, like, it was so fucking amazing. And so once she started crying, we were like, all right, yeah, we need to stop. You yeah. Know? But um, one of the other girls, like, cut her hand on the door, like, Ooh. pretty fucking bad. Ooh. And, like, ended up having to do a course of antibiotics. Shit. Like, yeah. But it was it was some funny shit. So, uh, Mel, if you ever come across this podcast, <laughs> I'm sorry that you had to do, take antibiotics. So... <laughs> But uh, do you remember? Do you remember uh, seeing that movie, Joseph? Yeah, man, that was ridiculous. I mean, it was like people <laughs> were just like emotionally and physically crumbling, you know, under <laughs> under the <Yeah>. under the <laughs> the weight of this uh, of this evil entity, man. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fucking fun, though. But um, anywho. Um, what else? What, what else? Where are we going to go for, uh, from here? Are we, are we done with the, the book list? Yeah, I think we've exhausted it, probably. Okay, cool. Uh, something else to mention, the Duke was really good. Uh, I don't know anything about the Duke, uh, like, really, uh, but I love it. Yeah. Like... Oh, dude, it's, it's like... 
it's it's it was really well done. I don't. I read an interpretation of the ending because mm-hmm. it kind of has this weird whatever you know. Um, and it's 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 kind of this woman dealing with mental issues and yeah. her and her son kind of dealing with mental issues, I guess. And it's like it seems but, like people are really terrified of it, but when I look it up, I just think he's so funny looking. Do, well, see, and that's that's what's really weird about the the Baba Duke yeah. is just the fact that it like when when it first gets um, introduced in the movie, it. It's not really that scary. Yeah. And then it's like it progressively gets like introduces a little bit more and like it it, it gets progressively scarier kind of thing as the movie goes. So. You know the whole thing about the Babadook being like a gay icon, right? Have you heard about that? Because no. that's amazing. <laughs> and I don't really get it, but there were a ton of like memes and stuff Jesus. About it. Um I saw a really good tweet one time that said yeah. something like, uh I'm I'm gay and the Babadook is my husband or something like that. <laughs> there, there's one on here that says, "Good morning, the Babadook is openly gay." <laughs> I, I just love it. it, was, it was That's so awesome. Um, so it's, we're kind of getting to the the end of the episode, but I kind of wanted to, um, un- unless you have something else that you're really hot to. I got I gotta mention my Stephen King thing. Okay, do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. This is a weird rabbit hole thing that I had saved. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about um, this. I, Gawker Media, rest in peace. Well, it's still around, but Gawker.com's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, Gawker had a story in, like, 2015. <laughs> the title was, What If Stephen King Killed John Lennon? This is a thing. This is a whole thing. Joseph, have you heard of this? Uh, read on. <laughs> if you google like Stephen King killed John Lennon or just Stephen King John Lennon or whatever there's yeah. like news stories because this dude that has this theory yeah. he like drives a van around that he's like spray painted that said Stephen King killed John Lennon and he just like drives around but he's been doing this for years oh, long wow. time um, so here's a quote Stephen King is the worst criminal the state of Florida has ever harbored, Steve Lightfoot said, before being peacefully escorted out of the council chambers. <laughs> Stephen King was a part-time resident of Casey Key, which is under Sarasota City jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. I'm from California. I'm known by 10% of Florida. I'm known by 50% of California. I'm the man exposing the truth about John Lennon's murder. Stephen King, <laughs> Lightfoot said, shot John Lennon. What? <laughs> Joseph, you're uh, you're in California. Do you know? Do you know Steve Lightfoot? Um, I think Steve Lightfoot. The latest numbers of Steve Light- and Steve Lightfoot are in, and uh, it is it, they've it, gone it, down a little. They've been re- it's re- been reduced to nine point three seven. But yeah, um, <laughs> he's uh, he swings he swings a big hammer on in the uh, in the John Lennon um, you know Stephen King controversy. Sure, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I saw him walking into the council chambers in Whittier last Tuesday. <laughs> Very nice. So, <laughs> that, that's been your uh, Whittier your Steve, Council. Yes, there, your Steve Lightfoot update. There are thousands of city councils throughout California, and I plan to go to every single one of them. <laughs> so, so Steve Lightfoot has a website. Uh, this the site's still out there. Um, LennonMurderTruth dot com. And if yes. you're bored, man, that is... Fucking rabbit hole. Oh, it's great. <laughs> it, uh, it looks like it's hosted on GeoCities or something, but there's actually a ton of info on there. Because, GeoCities. Yeah. God, I hadn't thought about Dude, that in forever. he just rambles. I mean, it reads like the fucking Unabomber's Manifesto. Really? Like, this guy. Oh and he's still posting, like, all the time. Like, I'm like, wow. oh, here's, like, a journal, and it's, like, constantly updated, Oh no, like it was updated a week ago. Like it's still Jeez, going. Dude. Um that is insane. Tons of rambling. It's it's yeah. a really fun so that's uh Lennonmurdertruth.com. <laughs> um Check it out. I, I tried to read even the details on just this Gawker story yeah. and my brain actually melted out of my ears just a little <laughs> yeah. bit. So yeah. I didn't do a super deep dive, but um That's amazing. Man, you could spend you could spend days on that guy's site. But pretty <laughs> much I'm gonna try to summarize it. Yeah. I think that Lightfoot says that Reagan and Nixon wanted Lennon killed, and they hired Mark David Chapman to be a Stephen King lookalike and take the fall. But, like, then his 
theory just kind of falls apart because the dude does kind of look like Stephen, Stephen King, King, the guy, the yeah. guy that did like get convicted of or whatever. Yeah, um, which I actually like. Simi recently listened to that last podcast. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. I just I was scrolling by that. And I was like, I need to listen to that one sometime. It's not bad, but yeah. I I don't know. I, it's it's not. I'm like, how would you make this a three parter? Like, yeah, yeah, that was kind of mine. My, my um, but like he doesn't really explain why he thinks Stephen <laughs> King did it. Like, why why not just have the Chapman guy do it. I don't, I don't know. So I mean, yeah. if you want to look into this on your own, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, all right. So just as a teeny, uh, whatever, uh, departure kind of thing, I figured we could, um, I don't know, talk about, uh, Joseph, do you have any like phobias? Cause uh, Ali had actually asked me and I don't know if I really do with the exception of maybe like one kind of thing um i please please have a super weird one <laughs> like be afraid of like clipping your toenails or something no no i you know i don't know i don't know that i do i think that uh maybe the closest thing um are you back in the aviary uh yeah yeah i'm in the aviary <laughs> <laughs> to be ripped from the aviary is my biggest fear, you know. Um, to not have my my, my, fed, my fine feathered friends around is horrifying. To me. Um, no, I think I think mine, honestly, man, not really. I don't know. In, yeah. You know, I infinity freaks me out. <laughs> yeah. God, li- living, yeah, living past like. I don't know. Sixty freaks me out. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When people talk about like, oh yeah, we'll get the technology, we'll be able to live to like one thirty, one forty. I'm like, I don't fucking want to. Can I yeah. opt out at like eighty five? Seriously. Like, because your health can't. Like, I mean, there's no your quality of life just yeah. has to fucking d- diminish to the point to where it's like there ain't one. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, um, I don't. So know. What about you? Uh? Yeah. What about you? <laughs> I. Okay. <laughs> I know this is dumb. I know it is. I am, and I'm, I'm pretty much over it now, but I was terrified of pregnant women for most of my, I don't, I don't remember it when I was little, but it like came on, like, I guess in like high school and college uh. and nothing triggered it. Like, I don't know where it came from, mm-hmm. but oh God, I just, if I was like beside a pregnant woman, like in line at the grocery store or something, I would yeah. be like sweating i'd be like i don't know i don't like it like what 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 are you afraid of yeah i don't i don't know i have no (laughs) idea which we were we were kind of talking about this pre-show and uh i I immediately was like oh well you've probably seen alien right is that what your is that what your uh, irrational fear is not really no like i know of i know of that scene but like i don't that's not a thing that happens you know so i don't know but it was it was so bad like i would I would, like, walk by a, like, maternity store in the mall and just be like, oh, jeez, <laughs> like, oh, dude. I was so... My first job was at Target, and when I got hired, I was 16, yeah. and there were eight currently pregnant women at that Target at that time. I feel like at that point, something's in the water, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh, maybe don't drink the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no shit. <laughs> but yeah, that was such a weird... And I have, I have no... And I also don't know why the fear went away either. Like, yeah. it just... It doesn't really bother me anymore. Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> well, and also kind of belly buttons. I really don't like belly buttons. Yeah. I mean... I, I I I can understand honestly the the pregnant woman thing because Allie was uh, kind of going a little bit more in depth too, and she's like, you know, like like during like the third trimester when the baby is like pretty much about the size it's gonna be, and like it's pushing against like the like whatever the belly wall, yeah. and you can see like the the woman's stomach like protruding, and you know, like you can actually see like a foot kick or a hand yeah, press, like yeah. That. It's just kind of weird. And she was like, I mean, I know that if it's your child, it's probably... And I was like, no, honestly, when Megan was pregnant, it was still fucking weird. Yeah, Megan (laughs) Megan was even like, no, no, it was in me, and I thought it was awful. (laughs) He, at that point, I mean. But uh, I I think the only thing that I could come up with is uh, claustrophobia... Um, which, I think that's a logical one. Like a lot of people have. Yeah. Well, I, I think I will actually get hot and sweaty uh, thinking about when Joseph and I used to go to the Gettys View Caves. Yeah. And go caving in there. Oh, I could never go caving. And we went. We I remember this one spot that like, luckily we never got like stuck or anything. Yeah. But like this one spot, like 
you had to lay down on your stomach and shimmy Ugh. between rocks because there were only there was only like a gap of like six inches, no you know, eight inches, nope. something like that. And I think back on that, and I'm like, dude, if something shifted yeah. or if like somehow you got stuck or whatever. Like, thinking about it right now is getting my heart yeah, racing, yeah. like, kind of shit. We, but, uh, I mean, there was one place in there where we, we had helmets with uh, with uh, with headlamps on. You had to take your helmet off to squeeze your head through the crack. Oh, yeah. my God. And it was it, like it rocks was were rubbing crazy. on both of your temples. It was crazy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you but had I, to, like, I just exhale. think back on that. <laughs> Remember? I yeah, mean, no, exactly. You had to, like, take shallow breaths and stuff just oh so my you God. could, like... But it was it was, which also sorry last movie that I'm going to mention, <laughs> The Descent. Yeah, I, that, I, I, another I've not seen, but I'm aware of. <laughs> dude, that one not only is terrifying, but it does this thing that it's like it has this twist at the end. Yeah, and you're just like, oh my god! You're right. Like, we have always lived in the castle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it 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 has a twist at the end. That yeah. Is, fucking terrifying but um oh i do have another fear what's up being underwater deeper than like six or eight feet mm. no could yeah. not. i can't even watch a movie that's got a scene like Ooh. the oh, the ca- the underwater cave diving shit Dude. fuck that no did it's like you have to follow like a fucking rope yeah you know no, uh-uh that's... And it's like you you fucking let go of that rope and you know or whatever get lost a yeah. little bit you're fucked yeah. kind of thing like people are like oh scuba diving and I'm like never yeah. I would never yeah I could not I think it. I could do open water scuba diving like off a coast kind of thing yeah or I guess that's not open water but um but like like going into like a coral reef or something yeah like that. yeah that'd yeah. be kind of cool so but I've got a real quick story go ahead yeah go have at it man. Um, yeah. so I took scuba diving classes in Tennessee, um, yeah. and I randomly like found this place and I was like, yeah, I want to do this. And so I went to, they had like a pool and went in the pool and they were like, well, we're doing like a checkout dive, you know, and then we've got to do this open water dive. Do you want to do the checkout dive? I'm like, sure. I showed up and it was in a quarry and mm-hmm. I went down 65 feet onto this platform that was suspended above like an infinite bottom. Like you couldn't see the bottom at all. Right. Ooh. And, Holy shit. and, and it was like super cloudy. And then the guy, Oof. something happened where the guy had to leave me down there and go back up to do something else. And he left and I was like standing on this platform and I'm like, huh? Okay. <laughs> you know? And like, yeah. and I was just suspended and there's like all these like particulates floating around, and it was oh. like, and then the last thing, like thalass of what's it called, thalassophobia or whatever, it's like fear of like open water and like deep spaces. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah. I used to do spear fishing in uh, Long Beach, and we would dive mm-hmm. on the opposite side of this thing called the break wall or the breakwater, mm-hmm. and you would be diving with your back against the open ocean. Dude, oh. it was freaky and we would like th- like swim out from there to uh floating kelp beds and you're yeah. just like at any moment a great white shark is just gonna come yeah. screaming yeah. from the depth and nail me <laughs> you know oh. um, but it was like Jeez. that was pretty creepy because you're just floating in open ocean looking down and it's like everywhere is scary <laughs> I mean, God. Like, no, yeah dude, no, i even i got so freaked on. out yeah. yeah yeah i got freaked out at like God, it was a Mario game. I can't even remember what game it was, but it was like an underwater level on yeah. like one of the more recent ones, like maybe GameCube or yeah. something. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't yeah. do the level. Like Ugh. I abandoned the whole fucking game because I couldn't. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I was seriously, I don't know, seventy percent through the game, and I yeah. was like, "This is it. I'm done. I'm. D- I was really enjoying this game. Uh, that's too bad." Man, like, I'm actually. I, uh, uh, a super side note. And obviously, <laughs> we're running fucking super long, but th- that's cool. <laughs> Fuck it. Whatever. Um, I'm actually playing through a game called uh, Amnesia right now, the Amnesia Collection. The only reason I'm playing it is because it's like a creepy game yeah. during whatever the month of October. Yeah. And uh, holy shit, dude. The sound design in this, and it's one of these situations of you're not, you can't be in the dark that long. Yeah. Or like you start going, quote, insane kind oh, of okay. thing. And so, but you have a... Uh, 
set number of tinder boxes to yeah. light things with yeah. and you're uh, you're constantly looking for oil for your lamp yeah and it's constantly going out so you're having to run to light from light to light uh. but then when you're exploring new areas it's like they have they had this shit that as you go more insane in the dark like the the visuals you start you know, seeing get, weird shit yeah you start seeing weird shit and like Something is out in the darkness. At this point, I don't know what it is. It's probably but it's the Babadook. Like, yeah, I, no say, I think it's the Babadook. He's just look. He's looking to clap some cheeks. <laughs> 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 but uh, yikes! Anyway, <laughs> yikes! But uh, but anyway, it's it's, it's really it's super fucking creepy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely no, would fun. recommend for any gamers out there. And I think it's it's gone on sale a bunch this month. Yeah. So. Yeah. But um, unless you guys have anything else, man, I think we're going to roll into the uh, the social jingle yeah. and uh, probably dip. Joseph, you got anything, brother? No, sir. That was bitching, man. I loved, I yeah, loved cool. hearing about all that stuff. It was yeah, a fun episode. This is a, this is a fun one. Yeah. And hey, listeners out there, let us know what you thought of this episode. Hit us up at... Uh, uh, you can hit us up on any of the social media platforms at, or you can send us a nice little uh, email. And you can hit us up at tetherradio at gmail.com. That is T-E-T-H-E-R-R-A-D-I-O at gmail.com. We are on uh, Jack Dorsey's Twitter sphere at tether underscore radio. We are also on Instagram at tether underscore radio. And we have a Facebook page currently. And I think Allie is doing... Kind of dabbling, I keep meaning to, and I, just, I still haven't put, but we'll get there. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll post we'll, stuff. Yeah, we'll, or I'll we'll keep get saying it that every week. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, so you can find us at Tether, uh, Tether Radio, all one word. Um, so yeah, this has been episode seventy-two of the Tether Radio podcast. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Like I said, let us know if you liked it, you hated it, you know, whatever. Because um, we want to put some content out there that you guys you actually want. So. Um, let us know if we, we entertained you for a little bit, but, uh, anywho, we will wrap the episode. So this is, this has been Tether, uh, this has been episode 72 of the Tether Radio Podcast. I'm Daniel. I'm Allie. And we got Joseph, uh, beaming in from LA. Uh, Joseph, thanks again for joining us this week, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. Looking forward to, uh, to the next one. Yeah, Rock yeah. and roll, man. All right, guys. Well, you know, you know, like we say it in uh, Tether Radio every week, man. Be sure to subscribe and don't miss out. It's the only way that we can make sure you stay tethered. Take it easy, fellas. Bye.